All right, I am back. It is an expedition closure, conclusion video, whatever you want to call it. I've hit the 36 challenge mark, which means I unlocked the final MTX, which is, you know, I guess all that I really care about because who doesn't, you know, love to see MTX? And I unlocked these portals. Uh, and they look pretty cool. You know, they got little icon thing down there. They've got, I guess it's like a weird glowy effect here. It's all very, very exciting. I also got a new hideout this league that I just downloaded from another player that this is how their hideout looked. So I copied it. Uh, I like it okay. I think I may switch. Um, now that I know how easy it is to switch hideouts, I think I'm going to switch hideouts every league. Um, and yeah, so... This is the build that I was playing last time I recorded a video. Very pleased with the results of this build. It's a cast on critical strike, rolling magma build. But wait, there's more. It's using the Secrets of Suffering Keystone, which gives ailments of brittle, short, scorch, and sapped. I'm not going to go into all the details. You need to go on a whole Wikipedia search to figure out what the hell these things do. The point is that they're very broken right now. They're extremely strong. And so I am getting two elements of ailment from this. I'm getting a cold damage roll that I got uh, adds 162 to 288 cold damage. Uh, because I'm a battle mage inquisitor, that's added on top of my rolling magma, which, oh, by the way, has a 230% added damage effectiveness which is like third or second in all skills in the game. So, I mean, excuse me, spells. Spells in the game, not attack. Um, but it's pretty wild. I mean, it's pretty crazy the amount of added damage effectiveness. I think Rolling Magma is a little bit overlooked right now. And it's not amazing, but it's really a pretty serviceable skill. So I'm a little bit surprised that more people aren't giving it a look, uh, especially after it got buffed this past league. I like to play things that got changed or buffed um or both um this was a flat buff it's just a damage buff to the skill and i also as is tradition prefer to play builds that are extremely underrepresented the inquisitor ascendancy class that i am playing this this bearded boy right here uh, is so extremely underrepresented this league because it actually got nerfed last patch. So um, a little bit disappointed in that because I actually favor the left side of the tree. I tend to favor the Marauder and Templar-based ascendancies. Um, this build, though, I mean, it's level 97. It is very enjoyable to play. I think it's... You know, I mean, obviously, I, I'm hard stuck at 97. I'm not, I'm not actively trying to gain more levels, but uh, it is pretty tanky. Uh, but more importantly is that this is my highest damage build that I've ever made. I think most of that is because of how hard carried we are by the ailment changes that they've made the past patch. The ailment changes really do cap your crit so easily. And plus, we're using a Marilene's Fallacy unique amulet which gives us 233 percent global critical strike multi multi which is <laughs> that's that's a lot uh and you would think that the downside of 40 less critical strike chance would be impactful but it actually isn't because the ailments uh are so broken right now so we'll see if they change those if they don't change those next patch then i am maybe going to try to pursue a build similar to this again we'll see um, as I did, you know, in previous leagues, I've been favoring Battle Mage, added spell damage, uh, equal to the damage of your main hand weapon. Um, I am also doing a, ba a battery staff as my main hand weapon, which is a little off meta. Um, I think a lot of Battle Mage people probably favor, um, like a mace and a shield or a, some type of weapon shield setup because shields are extremely popular in the current iteration of the game. Uh, the current iteration of the game has very poor defenses. It's very easy to die. In fact, this build, the only reason I really got it to 97 is because um, I paid someone a uh, service to get like the last half of 97 
which was totally worth it because one of the challenges was a five-way Legion X, uh, Legion Timeless, whatever the hell that place is called. Um, point is, this build uh, is my favorite, probably my favorite Inquisitor build to date. It might be my favorite build that I've made to date, just because it took a lot of twists and turns. The very first iteration of this build, the tree, it did go down here, it did go over here, and, and got this health and the strength and the stun immunity that most Inquisitors get. And I actually went all the way into the uh, Assassin area, picked up the Critical Strike and the health down here. But at that time, I was trying to do some type of janky, volatile dead Inquisitor, which was super scuffed, was really poor, not a great build, never going to do it again. But I got these nodes, I got Undertaker around here, and I ended up pivoting to Rolling Magma because I noticed that Rolling Magma was buffed. They're both fire-based skills. I just kind of shrugged and said, well, maybe this works as well. Um, but I think my league start, as my past league start, was just a Detonate Dead Inquisitor because it scales with levels pretty comfortably. But I definitely hit a wall that first week of the league after the Detonate Dead started to fall off. And, uh, but I'm really pleased with how this build performs now. Um, this is uh, the Power of pur Purpose no uh, keystone that I got from the Militant Faith uh, Timeless Jewel. See, you notice that this Timeless Jewel gives me increased effect of non-damaging ailments which helps with the secrets of suffering ailments scorch brittle sapped um these yeah these ailments are super busted if they completely uh go back on this change uh, it wouldn't surprise me maybe it would even be justified i think it's getting slept on um right now there are a couple of extremely broken skills uh and mechanics that are going to get uh backtracked and nerfed the next patch um so I think those are kind of all the rage right now. But I think that if I'm someone who, like myself, I like to make very off-meta, unusual builds that no one else is making. And I know for a fact, I don't even need to go to PoE Ninja to, to, to know that no one, no one is playing this exact build. I think there are probably not very many Rolling Magmas at all. And there are certainly not very many Rolling Magmas that use Phantasmal <laughs> with Enhance. <laughs> Which I still is a comedy that I'm using this. I don't actually know if this is even that good. Phantasmal quality gives a uh, chance for uh, double damage instead of chaining. With our setup, the chaining part of rolling magma is irrelevant. We don't even need chains. It's just not that important to us. So I was like, well, maybe we'll just try to get double da damage going. And I think that it's good and I think that it works. I don't, the, the path of building numbers don't actually work for it. Um, but the idea is that every time it does, you know, hit for double damage, I mean, this theoretically is a huge more multiplier um, on our, uh, you know, base damage. But anyways, all that to say, I'm very pleased with this build. I do have ailment immunity through this um, timeless jewel. Uh, which is necessary, I feel, in this patch as well. Uh, let's see, what else? Yeah, that's pretty much it for the tree. Um, not very good chaos resistance, and that's fine. Um, not really great physical damage reduction, but we're using um, petrified blood. We've got some pretty good... Uh, Pretty, pretty good auras, pretty strong auras. Yeah, there's Petrified Blood. Uh, and Zealotry. We do not have any Enlightens in this setup. If we got some Enlightens, maybe we could get the build, you know, even stronger. I actually do, I mean, I was in, in the middle of making this build stronger. Uh, and I think that it still could be even stronger. But I opted to make a second build. No Endurance for new builds which is true, uh, it's not as easy to be motivated to level through the axe anymore. Because so once you level through the axe one time, you know, it's just not easy to do it again. All right, this is a, a Tidebreaker ju Juggernaut. I love Tidebreaker, but I do have to face the facts that um, 
it's just not a very I don't I don't even know how to say it. It's not a uh it's just not a good weapon. It's not an elite level powerful in game weapon. It's just not. Which makes me so sad because I love endurance charges. I think it's so interesting. Um this is a uh, chain breaker build um using I like you know nine of these I don't even know how many way too many of these damn things six of them I think um to get channeling skills to cost nothing uh I kind of stopped playing the build I bought a very expensive ring and then literally that day I stopped playing the build so like I bought this extremely expensive item for it I invested all this currency into it and then stopped playing it because it just I don't know I mean obviously it only has 4k life it's not like it's a good build it was still it still had work left to be put into it but i just didn't you know i think tiebreaker i wanted to do it with impale yeah i and juggernaut the poor the poor juggernaut ascendancy i mean i love marauders i love this side of the tree i just you know i love all everything about it but um I just don't think, I think the unyielding Ascendancy Notable is so trash compared to other ones. Um, I mean, really, like, dog shit. Just awful. I mean, the amount, so the amount of Endurance Charges I have, I'm not entirely sure. I would need to do a little math here, but I basically have, I think, as many as you can get, save one. Um which is like 10 maybe um and you would think like oh wow that sounds pretty good like the but this percent increased damage is not a valuable stat the area of effect kind of valuable maybe but the stun stuff like no one gives a shit about stun anyways so and plus the, these little notables really not that valuable I just don't think, and then I also use unrelenting, which is per endurance charge again, but it's just not very good. I think the unrelenting is even less popular. So anyways, I mean, they keep talking about how they're going to try to get classes to be balanced and, you know, the juggernaut ascendancy is just not as good as other ascendancies straight up. Um, Anyways, uh, this build, uh, the only useful part about this build, the only reason it's even worth talking about at all is because the, uh, the rage mechanic actually makes, uh, let me make sure I have my right stuff. No. I forget what I was doing. But the only reason that this is a interesting build is because of our movement speed. Um, so we're generating rage and oops so cyclone doesn't cost us anything it doesn't cost us any mana it doesn't cost us any rage so we're just zipping around and this isn't even as fast as we can go i think we can go a lot faster i think if we turn on our Get us zooming around. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, yeah, but unfortunately, that gimmick tends to lose value pretty quick, in my opinion. This uh, setup with the, this ascendancy, um, excuse me, with these cluster jewels as well as the chain breaker. Um, I, I don't. I think this is super broken. I think there's a lot of weird broken mechanics about it, but it wouldn't surprise me if this stayed in the game and they chose to not nerf it and just leave it as is. Wouldn't surprise me. Even though it's so super busted, I think it's it's annoying and and requires a lot of setup. So probably not something worth GGG's time. Um and the other thing you may notice about this league as opposed to the last league is that I didn't actually make very many characters, and I I really didn't play, I think, as much. I mean, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done with this patch, like, so hard. I'm done with it. 
Uh, I'm burned out on it. I'm just... I'm cooked. I think I'm ready to play some new games for a while. You know, maybe the next patch comes out and I kind of muster up some excitement for it again. But this was... I mean, I had to force myself into getting the 36 challenges. You know, there were definitely... As exciting as it is to make this new build or make and you know research this mechanic and all that, I think uh, something's changed in my personal life and my work life and whatever that would cause me to slow down and hit the brakes a little bit. Uh, it's probably for the best. Um, so yeah, I guess that's all I have to say. Uh, final closing thoughts on Expedition League is I'm good with moving on from the league. See ya. You know, peace out, Expedition. Uh, I had a very low player count. A lot of people were disappointed with a lot of the changes they made. I am disappointed because the Inquisitor, my favorite class, got absolutely bricked, like just crushed. In fact, we can spend one quick hot second just a teeny tiny second on Pee-wee Ninja. Um, let me make sure I can do this. All right. Oh, that seemed to work okay. All right, okay. Um, so, yeah, look at that. Yikes. Tri I didn't know Trickster was in this much trouble, too. Looks like Trickster sucks, too. It's a good league starter, but nothing else. But, yeah, the Inquisitor... You know, am I the only rolling magma? Point eight. Yeah, baby, there I am. I'm the only one. Standing alone. But I love it. That's why we play the game, is to be weird. To be different. Have a little unique snowflake attitude. Um, Raider is super broken, in my opinion. They really didn't nerf it that hard. And the fact that they nerfed so many other ascendancies so aggressively, like, man, wow, yikes. Um, and then here's Juggernaut down here. I mean, all of these. Um, it's funny the champion has been so bricked, but, I mean, you know. Uh, attacking skills, melee skills, whatever. Um, yeah, they're not very meta right now. People don't want to get close to anything. You kind of got to kill stuff from afar. The defenses in this game right now are super scuffed. Um, yeah, Spectral Shield Throw is extremely broken right now, as well as Forbidden Right. Forbidden Right is the quote-unquote most broken skill right now. Uh, the way that it scales uh, and the way that you can stack Totem Health for it, it's very broken. Um, so yeah, uh, that's it. This is a pretty long recording. I hope uh, whoever's listening can tolerate the uh, the length. All right, uh, I'm closing it down though. This this is the end of Path of Exile for me. Um, until next league. Uh, bye. <laughs>